So are you streaming? Okay. All right. Hey, we are live again with the uh, Mom at Home session. Today we are uh, welcoming our visitor services manager, Mr. Bill. Uh, if you've ever scheduled a tour or volunteered at the Museum of Making Music, which if you haven't yet, I highly recommend uh, giving a try out. Uh, Mr. Bill will be your, your point of contact and he uh, makes sure that everybody is uh, taken care of at the museum. And uh, if you don't know, my name is BJ Morgan. I am the marketing manager for the Museum of Making Music and uh, your lovely host for today. Bill has put together a wonderful program. Uh, we're going to call it MIDI Madness. And uh, Bill, do you want to kind of talk about what, what MIDI is? I, well, let me, let me preface this. Neither Bill nor I are MIDI experts per se. We don't know the underpinnings and we're not going to get super in the weeds or super technical with you today. But we will, as two musicians who love MIDI, who love using MIDI and are uh, whose worlds were changed in different ways by the, uh, the use of this technology, uh, we're going to talk about what we do and uh, answer questions you may have about it to the best of our abilities. Again, we are not experts in MIDI, but we are two just passionate musicians who use it uh, day to day. And then I also have my son here. He's going to be listening along. Say hi to Dylan. He uses MIDI as well, whether he knows it or not. So take it away, Mr. Bill. Okay, BJ, that was a heck of an introduction. Let me dovetail on uh, your talk about volunteers. Uh, I do want to welcome any of our volunteers who are with us today. We certainly miss you and we look forward to things getting back to normal as soon as possible. So thanks those of you who are here with us and anybody else who's chosen to join. Uh, welcome and here we go. Let's talk about MIDI. So if you are in the music world at all, you probably hear this term MIDI banded about once in a while. Maybe you're not sure what that means. It's got a very sort of high dollar name, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. That's a pretty lofty way of saying it's a protocol that was designed and introduced in 1983. A couple of gentlemen, uh, Ikutaro Kakahashi with Roland, and Dave Smith of Sequential Circuits thought, you know, there's gotta be a way we can get all these keyboards that are out now to start to communicate with one another. Uh, and that is uh, as deep as I can go. Like you were saying, BJ, I don't really know the nuts and bolts of MIDI. I just know that it's a wonderful protocol. It works. And one of the coolest things they did was make it open source. It was free to everybody. Nobody has to pay to use MIDI. So is MIDI a thing? Is it something you can touch? It's, it's not a tangible item uh, and it doesn't actually create the sound. Uh, I was thinking about this yesterday. Uh, a MIDI cable really is very much like a piano roll on a player piano because that roll of paper has all the holes in it that send the information to the piano to play, but the roll of paper itself doesn't make music. That's just the device by which the music is made. So let me hold up just so everybody can see. Can you see that all right? Yay, that is a MIDI cable. <laughs> see, it's a five pin cable and it's got five pins on either end. It's a fairly short one. They are not all this short. This is one that could reach from my house to the lagoon. Uh, basically you use a cable that's as long as you need to get from your keyboard to wherever you are sending MIDI and wherever you're receiving MIDI. So MIDI is kind of like a two lane highway, if you will. From my keyboard, which is here in front of me, I can connect a MIDI cable and I can take that cable out from my keyboard into my computer. What that allows me to do is send digital information from my keyboard to my computer. Now to get it back to the keyboard, I have another MIDI cable coming back this way and that sends the information or rather returns the information from the computer back to my keyboard. So that is how the music itself is actually generated via MIDI. I play the keyboard into, uh, in my case, I use a program called Digital Performer. Uh, there are many, many uh, what we call DAWs or digital audio workstations. There's Digital Performer, uh, there's Logic, uh, the Cubase, uh, Pro Tools, uh, and um, uh, all of those can be used to create music. Yes, sir. 
I have a question, Bill. Oh, already. so uh, the, the MIDI cable, it has five pins in it. I have one here too. It's This is a little bit different. If you could see that at home, I can't I'm super that. short, but mine has uh, Bluetooth built into it. So I can plug this into my keyboard over here or my uh, electric drums over there. Okay. <laughs> and it will transmit the MIDI over Bluetooth, but also, um, from what I understand, MIDI can also travel over like a, a regular USB cable that everybody's used to. Is that correct? Yes, uh, that's something that came along a little later. I don't know exactly when, but a lot of the keyboards uh, that I've uh, seen in recent years, uh, some don't even have MIDI in and out. They just have a USB output or rather a two-way USB street that'll go directly to the computer. So that's sort of the next iteration of this idea. So with your cable there, you're saying that, that uh, you don't have to run an actual physical cable all the way over to a unit. The Bluetooth handles that. that that's right. I can plug these like my, my B drums are way on the other side of this room. I can plug it in there. I don't have to have a 50 foot cable to, to run it. It's Bluetooth. So, you know, it's a little slower. I can't go you know across the street or anything, but I can still, uh, you know, make that happen. It's pretty, pretty fun. Wow. Very cool. So when it first came out, MIDI would allow you 16 basically channels or tracks. It could handle 16 different individual isolated tracks at a time, which is pretty cool when you think about it. It's kind of like a 16 track analog tape deck that a lot of people recorded on. Uh, and then they had this wonderful idea. We're gonna create MIDI interface units that allow you to plug several different keyboards or tone modules in via MIDI. Each one of those has its own 16 tracks. So imagine I've got an eight, uh, I think it's an eight uh, in and out MIDI interface uh, for uh, these MIDI units. So now eight times 16, that now all of a sudden I have 124 MIDI channels available. So the sky's the limit really as far as, uh, as far as what the possibilities. Yes, sir. What, 128 channels of MIDI, is that like a hundred channels and there's nothing on or maybe do you, do you use, have you ever used that many MIDI channels? I, I, I've, I've tried DJ, I've tried, but I uh, haven't gotten that quite far out with it. But yeah, you could actually have uh, 128 different uh, channels all sort of moving at the same time. It really is, I mean, when you think about it, you know, we get on the five freeway, we're going this way and there's five lanes of cars going that way. And on the other side, we see five lanes of cars coming the other way. So I we're trying, trying to point that, the yeah. other cars are returning MIDI. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy stuff. Awesome. Uh, it, it continues to morph, it continues to change. Uh, now uh, in my system, I've got, and I know you do too, we've got what are called the virtual synth libraries uh, and we're still uh, triggering them via MIDI, but as far as the number of tracks or channels, it's, it's infinite. You can go as deep as you want to really. Um, 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 okay, so first, uh, like I say, it was uh, what we call MIDI workstations, MIDI DAWs, performer. Uh, I started out on one called Personal Composer, and I have to give a nod to my wife. She's actually the one that, uh, that opened the door to this world and sort of nudged me in. I was happily playing my guitar 30 years ago, and she saw the writing on the wall, and one Christmas I had a PC, a keyboard, and a MIDI interface, and this program called uh, Personal Composer. Uh, and I gotta tell you, BG, when I sequenced my first eight measures of drums, bass, and piano, it was like an epiphany. The sky opened up and wow, this is cool. Uh, eventually, uh, designers, the innovators being the people they are, they came up with uh, digital audio. So performer became digital performer uh, and the rest of them followed suit. And what that means is that in your DAW now, uh, not only can you record MIDI information, which again, is just computer information. It's zeros and ones, boom, 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 back and forth. But you can also in the same program record actual live audio. So if you have say a vocalist come into your studio after you've done your track, you can record their vocal directly into your system. And the amount of editing capability is, is staggering. It's Yeah, that's, it's, that's the amazing thing about MIDI, at least one thing that opened the doors for a lot of musicians, like, uh, as I mentioned yesterday to Jonathan, when he was talking about the jug, I've, I'm, a, I'm a drummer, so I'm kind of on the, the low rung of the totem pole as far as musicians are concerned, but uh, it, I, I can still, you know, I can, if I take my drum kit and then, you know, hit my electric drum kit and feed that MIDI signal in, I can have with these, these virtual instruments of all high samples, really cool uh, instruments that I've never 
thought I would be able to play before. You know, you might just have an electric drum sound, which itself pretty cool, you know, having electric drums there. But then if I want to have a, you know, whole set of tablas or a whole set of, you know, Korean drums or something like that, I just have to find the right virtual library with you know, instruments that have been recorded or they are created um, programmatically. And now I have this entire universe of new sounds just from the same instrument. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I can plug into a, a piano sound now and play piano with my drums. A little awkwardly, but it still can be done. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I mean, people see a keyboard, they think it's going to play piano sounds, and that's it. If people see your drum set, if it's a MIDI drum set, they're still going to think it is for playing drum sounds. But because of the MIDI protocol, you can control any MIDI instrument to play any sound you want to trigger with your particular instrument. And don't don't uh, don't do yourself a disservice by saying you're the, on the low run. Find a band that doesn't have a drummer and is trying to groove real hard. And, you'll know how important you are, right? <clears throat> so that kind of leads us to the next uh, area we're gonna talk about and is MIDI, are MIDI controllers only keyboards? You sort of answered that already by saying you have a MIDI controller that's a drum set. Uh, once they realize the potential of this protocol, it, 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 certainly we associated with keyboards primarily, I wanna say, because that's where it was introduced, Yamaha, Korg, and so on and so forth got on board right away. Um, but eventually Roland and I'm sure other people designed guitar MIDI controllers. Uh, there's uh, an Iwi electronic wind instrument. I believe that's Yamaha. And again, that is a MIDI controller that's designed to look like a saxophone, almost like a soprano saxophone. So if you're a saxophonist, you have access to all those MIDI sounds because it's the same sort of fingering, same uh, pads, if you will. It looks like pads anyway. Uh, and we had at the museum for quite some time a pretty wild instrument called a pan cat. Remember the pan cat? It was a MIDI controller that was designed for steel drum players. Oh, yes. I, I remember the pan cat. In fact, uh, fun, fun fact, personal history. Uh, my first MIDI controller that I had was called the trap cat. And it was still made by it was made by uh, uh, Cat Industries. And it looked like half of a stop sign with a ton of. <laughs> ton of like just uh rubberized you know foam pads that you'd hit right. and make your drum sounds on and that was because uh in the college dorm they frowned upon having full-size drum kits that to bang on so I, I used that for my practice when i couldn't get to the practice rooms very cool yeah so it, it really has just caused an explosion here it's opened the door so wide for not only live performance my particular application for midi really is in composing and as somebody who writes and or arranges music, and did that open the door for you? Because now if, let's say you wanna compose the world's next great symphony with all these virtual libraries and the keyboards and the modules and all this control you have, you can create an entire virtual orchestra in your, uh, in your DAW, in your sequencer. And what's so cool about that, I think about it all the time, you know, looking back to composers, say, in the 1600s, if they couldn't find an orchestra to play this piece they'd written, the only way they ever heard it was in their head. This uh, technology now allows us to hear this music as we know we want it to sound. Hopefully, in the, in, you know, in a perfect world, uh, you get your symphonic piece actually played by a live orchestra. But if it doesn't happen, hey, you've gotten to hear it anyway. Uh, and as far as the composing process goes, you're not sort of writing all this down on paper, it's in the machine. And if there's a note you don't like, you get rid of it and put the one in that you do like. So, you know. Right. Plus it seems now that the quality of all the instruments that have been recorded to be samples, uh, I mean, they, I mean, you can have a, an entire orchestra without having an orchestra anymore. And mm -hmm. some of that music you actually is, you know, scored for movies, scored for television commercials. Right. Uh, and you, you know, you the layman can barely tell the difference anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's just been such a game changer. And it's hard to believe it's almost a 40 year old protocol. It was 83. So we're coming up on 40 years of MIDI. <laughs> so should we kind of show some examples of how? Yeah. Bill, you have a really cool studio and uh, your 
MIDI setup is, uh, I mean, you, you seem to use it a lot more than I do. So, I mean, let's, it, let's go ahead and take a look at what you're doing and um, tell us at home kind of how you, how you approach using MIDI and what you, how you like to play around with it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Tell me when we are groovy. Looking good. You see it there? I do see it. All right. Very cool. Well, let's take a little tour of Digital Performer. All right. Following my little mile share there, up in the top, this is the counter, basically. On the left-hand side, it is showing you the measure number. That's where zero is. We're starting at zero. The middle number is the beat in the measure. And then the right side number is actually subdivisions of the beats. Uh, in the MIDI world, a quarter note equals 120 ticks. So this is what we call the ticks window. Over here then is the time, how much time is elapsing while you're playing your sequence, okay? Underneath that and the controllers for play, record, stop, pause, rewind, they're all right here to the left of that. Underneath the uh, measure and the timer, see some information about where we're gonna start the sequence, where we're gonna stop it, where we're gonna punch in and out. And then we see the time signature of 4-4. We also see the beat or the tempo and quarter note is 75. That's our tempo on this little song that we're gonna to put together. Okay. I'm gonna use all that now, this largest area that I have open. This is called the tracks window. The top track is what we call the conductor track. And that's where you put all your information for tempo, meter uh, and, and uh, key. And I'll show you that to the right in just a second. Now I've got three little um, audio tracks open here. I'm not gonna use these today, but this is showing you where you could actually drop some audio. This says tracks. If I wanted to drag an audio file and drop it in, I would just drop it right here. And I have an audio file that I can work right off of. Uh, vocal, if a vocalist came in, that would be here. Uh, and then if I needed to do some edits, I kind of pull them down and, and save them if I wanna put them back in. All right. All right, underneath we have two folders, one, and they each say play folder. Okay, that's the name of the engine. It's the play engine. Uh, and this is what drives these, uh, these virtual synth sounds. So I have play folder one is set up with a rhythm section. I've got a drum set, I've got a bass. Then my play folder two says platinum orchestra. That's pretty cool, huh? Underneath <laughs> that it says large string ensemble. I'm a real sucker for orchestral instruments. They just, they, they, they're so beautiful. Uh, underneath that then it says, okay, that's kind of hard to see, but this is a Steinway piano. Oh, cool. Yeah. So uh, underneath that, before I start putting things in, then I generally like to use this window underneath, which is called the MIDI window. Mm -hmm. Or in the MIDI window, you're gonna see the MIDI information show up as I start to play into the tracks window. Now, right here, I've clicked on a, a little drop down menu that shows me all of the tracks that I have in this particular sequence. So when I click on this drums, it's a Ludwig drum kit. Now, when I start to put in some drum parts and please uh, BJ, <laughs> I know you're a drummer. <laughs> you could do this in about five seconds, but I'm gonna put it in like one step at a time, just sure. so you can see how that process works. Now over to the right then, Right about here, we see it says conductor. Once again, I can click on this and see all of the tracks that I have in this sequence. And then this is the event list in the conductor track. I have the key, which is G major. I have the uh, meter, which is four, four. And again, quarter note uh, to the beat. And then the tempo of quarter note equals 75. Now to help me, be able to be accurate with this, I use something called input quantize. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you know, it, it makes it go on real nice and clean. And uh, then I can go around and fill around with things later on if I need to. Uh, all right, hang on a minute. I'm having a little brain melt here. Here we go. All right, du -du -du -du. here we go. So you're going to see a little window pop up. See that on the right hand side? It says input quantize. I've selected the 16th note as the note I want to quantize. So what quantize means is if I'm playing into the sequencer and I play a little bit ahead of the beat or a little bit behind the beat, it'll actually push the note to be more on the beat. 
and this is kind of a pop ballad thing that I've uh, could be working on here. So 16th note definitely is something you hear in the pop ballad world. Sensitivity, I've got at 90 and strength at 90. So it's not quite exactly on the mark. There can be a little room for, for error, if you will. Well, it sounds like a typical drummer playing a little bit ahead of the beat or a little bit behind the beat. You know, that's all right. All this, all, all this time I thought it was just us guitar players. <laughs> then I'll check up here. This is my click, which is basically like a metronome. When it's not blue, it's not on. When it's blue, it's on. And then to record, you enable the track by clicking on the little button that turns red. Just like the old red light in the recording studios and the red the meters on the old analog tape decks. It's the same idea. All right, so I'm going to give myself, are we hearing that? I hear it. Don't judge, B, BJ. Here we go. I'm going to give myself a measure, and then I'll start playing a little bass drum group. There's our starting point. Okay. Next thing you'd want to do maybe is add a hi-hat on top of that. I'm going to go with a 16. You can see how far off that. <laughs> and I think our uh, audio uh, presentation software is, thinks it's background noise, so it's cutting it off a little bit. But yeah, I'll know. you'll just have to imagine at home what a, a, a Ludwig drum kit and Ludwig hi-hat sounds like before it gets cut off. There you go. Good. All right. So that's pretty close. Not quite on the mark, but add a snare. Okay, a little, little hiccup at the end there, but that's all right. This is all stuff that you can fix when you're in the editing world. So there's basically a, a startup of a, of a little drum loop there. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid Zoom is like, no, that's background noise. <laughs> All right. Well, your next step then would be to grab that. So is it cutting it off completely then? Well, we get the first chunk of it. It's okay. We're going to use our imaginations. Imagine there's no music. All right, here we go. Uh, so now what I've done is I've grabbed that little chunk that I created, copied it and pasted it. Really, you know, it's very much like a word program, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Grab a paragraph and move it over here if you want it somewhere else as well. Oh, now it's just background noise. <laughs> All right. Well, darn. Okay. Well, let's go to the next. Next track I would do would be a little bass track. So background noise or am I in there? Yeah, I can hear it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's good. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, let me get out of this window too. Come over here, and here's our base window. Now there's nothing there because I haven't played anything yet. And here's a little bass part. So you can see slowly you start to build. Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a song, bit by bit, um, and of course, you get brave in the drum world. You can actually start to uh, do all the parts at once. I'm going to give that a go just for giggles here. All right, let me go back to drums. See if I can make that happen. Okay, so what I did there was bass, uh, drum, snare, and hi-hat all at the same time. And there it is. So that, that's essentially, you know, how I would go about starting to build a song. Okay. Uh, put a song together. Uh, and then as you step through, there's some other sounds. There's a piano sound. So on and so forth. And, of course, my favorite world. I hope this doesn't cut out, but let's see. The 
just can't get enough symphonic music. So once this is all said and done, here's what our final track would sound like. Let me grab a string part, pull that over. How are we doing on time? Did you? I don't even know. Oh, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We do have a question from uh, one of our viewers there. Shoot, fire away. Uh, this is from Marina. She says, how much music should someone know to use MIDI? <laughs> That's a really, really good question. That is a great question, uh, Marina. Let me answer that in a couple of ways here. Uh, at the Museum of Making Music, one of the questions I get quite often from moms and dads is, what instrument should my child learn how to play? And uh, my answer is always the instrument that they gravitate to will find them. For me, it was guitar. Uh, I know Carolyn is very often uh, for her, it was the cello. But I recommend to everybody, and I know this sounds so old school, and old fashioned, but get keyboard skills uh, under, your, under your fingers. Now more so than ever, because as you can see, if you can play the keyboard, you can, uh, morph into doing all of this sort of thing. Um, so how much music do you need to know? BJ, I think you're going to address the looping and dropping things in in a couple of minutes, right? Yeah, we can, we can take a look at that. Um, that. Um, but what I will also say is that in programs like Digital Performer, uh, you are allowed the option to do what's called step recording, which means you can put in one chord, say, at a time. Then it will advance to the next beat, put in the next chord. Advance, put in the next chord. So if you sort of figure these chords out, you can put them in one piece at a time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That way you don't have to fly through an entire piece of music in your head. You can just do it right. chunk by chunk, little chunk at a time for whatever thought. Exactly. I mean, I, to, be, to be honest, when I write music, it's about four measures at a time. This right, is right. Coming. And then I hear other things and I want to get those in there before I forget them. So uh, it certainly, when you hear these things, it's not like, wow, he sat down and did that in 15 minutes, at least not in my world. So let me play this little piece and then why don't we jump over to yours? Okay. This is that kind of groove and it's got nice piano and strings and whatnot in it. Let's hope uh, YouTube or Zoom or whoever else is nice mm -hmm. to this here. Pretty cool. Isn't that fun? Yeah. You get the I full did. band there without with the, the one man band. That's it, man. That's it. So I mean, when we talked about the difference between audio and MIDI, like if you were to what we call uh, I, I think it's in digital performer, you bounce these tracks and you can bounce them to become a uh, like an MP3 that people are listed used to listening to on their uh, you know uh, smart devices or uh, how we get music nowadays or used to anyway now we can stream a lot of it but I, I know that passing these mp3 back back and forth these audio files is uh you know they can be big files like megabytes of data but the difference here between midi the messages that midi transmits from the computer to the virtual instruments is only like bytes or if even if even kilobytes of information really really small bits of information that can easily be passed uh, backwards and forwards i mean i know uh we had, uh, as we were preparing for this presentation, I have digital performer that I use too. And also we explored sending MIDI from your computer in Carlsbad to my computer here in Temecula, California. And it was almost instantaneous. You were able to play your, in, your keyboard 
and trigger my instruments on my computer. It was, it was kind of spooky, actually. Maybe we'll try and do that again and see if we can't get that connection going. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to kind of um, share what I, my family does here. I know that my son Dylan loves uh, using this program that we call uh, Machine. Cool. It uses a different device. Uh, it looks like a set of pads. I'll try and pull one here. So you can see you what it's going to get out of full screen or. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me <laughs> adjust the screen here. All right. How's that look magic. <laughs> magic man, BJ. You have impressed me so much in the last week. <laughs> so <laughs> as most, most, uh, uh, people associate when they associate like composing with MIDI, they'll look at a keyboard or, you know, keyboards tend to have an easier time with MIDI because they, you know, it's, it's, it's just like that piano roll that you described, but also you can have different instruments that look like this. It doesn't look anything like a piano. It's just a ton of buttons that you see. And all these buttons can do the same thing, can serve the same function and, and trigger notes or trigger different uh, passages. I'll plug that back in. There we go. And uh, when you're in a program like, program like a machine, it allows you to create beats. Let's see if I can't share my screen. Now it's gonna be hard for me to, I've been monitoring the, the chat conversation on our YouTube channel. So I'm gonna to have to, I, I still am paying attention to everyone chatting out there on our YouTube page, but I'm gonna be talking now. Look out. Good. Is that something I can do or is that all your world? No, it's okay. Uh, unless like if Carolyn, I think Carolyn's on uh, the chat too, if she wants to serve as our official uh, museum liaison. Let's see, where are we going here? There we go. Okay, that was you. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got it. I gotta hit the wrong button. So machine, this is the this is the software that I use, and it looks similar to your software too. Yep. You have these little streaks that you find here that looks just like our piano roll. In fact, you can recognize these as uh, notes on a keyboard. Yep. And uh, it functions the same way, except that every time I push one of those buttons you saw earlier, it triggers these notes. So it's just a different layout. But if I'm doing something like drums, which I'm going to unmute all of my channels here. There we go. And drums. So if you just want to get a, a drum beat going, like I can do, let's do this one. Now there's my drums. And I can record a new drum beat on it. that it just gives me a loop to work with and i've just you know you can create beats on the fly really quickly and if i if i don't like something so i just change it up on the fly if i need and now to answer the i'm seeing here that was just yeah, the the uh, button pad you have there. Exactly. Yeah, these are. I'm just pressing these buttons here. You can't see it because my camera's up here and all the buttons are down here. But it's. Uh, I'm just. All I'm doing is just hitting these pads, and these pads are like playing drums, like tiny little drums. Uh, I have uh, 16 pads on my on one controller. Then the controller I just showed you, I have 64 pads, so I can go crazy playing all those pads. Uh, and then you may have noticed if you're if you have a keen eye, you might have noticed that all my keyboard my keyboard changed all different colors too. That also indicates different drums that I can play on my keyboard now. So I get that that marimba sound too. But uh, I you know I use uh, after you put this together, you can do have all these different uh, patterns and um, there I added a bass line. These are all pre-recorded things. Switch back and forth between different uh, sequences. Those are loops that you've dropped in there, BJ. Then yeah, very cool. They're all. It's all just makes it super easy. So that's kind of how I use MIDI uh, in my own studio, just creating beats and using loops to kind of explore um, solo opportunities. Mm -hmm. So any last words on uh, MIDI and the development of MIDI? Or like what we use MIDI for? What you use MIDI for? <laughs> <laughs> Me? Are you asking this uh, to the? I'm asking. The I'm asking anyone who is uh, who is out there. Yeah, who is out there? 
Let's see. Hold on. I'm trying to consolidate my screens here, Bill. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Better you than me. There we go. Okay. So we're all just going to be wrapping up. I'm looking for any. Oh, is MIDI. Here's another one from Marina. She's got a lot of great questions. Uh, let's see. Is MIDI compatible with Mac and Microsoft? Uh, I, I will feel this answer as yes, MIDI is compatible with both Mac and Microsoft. It's actually, it transcends operating systems. Uh, it can work from instrument to instrument. So like the instrument I just showed you, uh, my machine jam, I can uh, hook that up to Bill's piano. And if Bill's piano had sounds built into it, I could play those sounds on his piano. Or like the Roland 808 uh, or the 909 or even modern drum machines. Uh, you don't have to have a computer to do MIDI. Uh, it helps because that's where a lot of the uh, writing and composing happens in a computer program, right. but it's not necessary. Even there's some even uh, workstations uh, by manufacturers. So you can do the entire composition inside the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think, mostly controlled by MIDI data or can be exported for MIDI data to, to a computer. And let's see, other questions. Sorry, I'm reading now. It's very boring when I read. Can a MIDI program write out the score you've created? You want to feel this one, Bill? Uh, yeah, sure. It can. Uh, it is not as instantaneous as saying create a score. Um, let me share my screen again, see if I can. This is an area that I don't use so much in Digital Performer. But uh, if you follow my arrow here, you'll see uh, a tab called Quick Scribe. When I click on Quick Scribe, it shows you notation of what I've been putting in there. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, as you see, the space part here, well, that clef would need to be changed to treble because it's pretty high and be pretty tough to read. But uh, the, sh the shorter answer is yes, it can. Uh, there is certainly editing involved. But what we're seeing right here is, as it says to the left, uh, the large string ensemble. So that is the string part that I played. Uh, the reason I haven't really delved into it so much here in Digital Performer is because I use another uh, scoring program called Finale, uh, and that's where I do my scoring. So from Performer, actually, I can export a file into Finale, and then I can take all these parts and straighten them out so that they really are readable. If I were to hand this score to somebody, it would be pretty difficult for them <laughs> as, it, as it stands right now. But short answer, yes, you can do that right from uh, a DAW. Awesome. And our, our staff has been excellent at, at fielding some of the questions on uh, YouTube right oh, now. Jonathan's you. there and uh, Allison's there and Carolyn's there. They're fielding a lot of good questions. Cool. All right, any, any final thoughts on MIDI, MIDI, Bill? You know, just if you have a... You know, most everybody in the world has a home computer. So I'm, I'm sorry. Well, that too, but uh, a, a keyboard, a, a modern keyboard, and your keyboard's going to have MIDI in and out on the back of it. So maybe if you can find a fairly inexpensive digital audio workstation, load that into your computer and start playing around. There's, uh, there's, you have to have an interface as well, but there are simpler interfaces that just go right from the keyboard via MIDI cable into the computer. And you know, it's a fun way to get started. I and mean, seriously, like when I wrote that first little eight measure piano bass drums piece, however many years ago that was, just uh, this guy opened up, man. So, you know, get out there, create, make music. We're of course there at the museum uh, once we get back on track and any questions you have about any of this sort of thing, if you come visit us at the museum, I mean, as you can see, I could talk about this all day. So. I'm happy to talk MIDI. We have a really nice little MIDI keyboard display in Gallery 5 uh, and some MIDI, uh, what are called modules. This is one thing we didn't touch on, which kind of freaked me out when it first happened. But what these innovators also realized is now that you can control other keyboards with the one, what we call a master controller, right, or keyboard controller, do the other units necessarily have to be keyboards? They don't anymore, right? Hmm. All you need is the brains that's inside your keyboard, all the sounds and all the parameters that you can adjust via MIDI. So the next thing that came out uh, were what they call rack modules. Basically, if you took this keyboard, because this does have thousands of sounds in it, if you took all that technology and put it in a box, which is 19 inches wide, that's the rack space 
uh, standard size, uh, you can control those sounds and you don't have to have 15 keyboards stacked up in your room. You can have one keyboard and several modules. Yep. No end to this, BJ. We can go <laughs> hey. Tell you what, we'll need to put together uh, some resources for people who are interested in learning more about MIDI or there's a lot of uh, uh, open uh, domain or public domain MIDI compositions on the web that you can check out. Right. Um, and then if you're interested in, in getting your own little setup, we'll put together some resources for that or re make recommendations of websites you can visit. And if people want to get a hold of you, Bill, and to ask more questions, how can they do that? Uh, just email me, billk at nam.org. Uh, we are, as you know, all working from home, but we've got access to everything uh, that we have there at the museum. So I'll, I'll see your emails come in and I will be happy to answer those. I can spend my day talking music. I'm a happy man. So. All right. And uh, for, more, for more information, we've got uh, a couple more uh, mom at home scheduled this week. And I think we'll be uh, preparing some, some for next week too. I think we've still got some in the hopper. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be working with uh, the two cool for school virtual kid camp on Facebook, as well as studio ACE. And we're going to make some musical instruments for the kids uh, we're not going to be on the YouTube live tomorrow, but we're actually going to be on Facebook live tomorrow. So go visit our Facebook site and, or go visit museum of making music.org slash events to learn how to participate tomorrow. Okay. That's Thanks 2 everybody. 2 PM tomorrow, right, BJ? Uh, 2 PM. Cool. Yeah. Cool. See you there. Bye. <laughs>